Airlink just launched a couple of weeks ago, allowing you to connect your headset to your PC completely wirelessly. The only problem is we've been able to do this since the Quest 1 with virtual desktop already. Now, I've been meaning to make a comparison video between the two, and I wanted to make it the week Airlink launched, but I actually didn't get access to the feature for a really long time. And then finally, when I did get access to it, it was announced that they'd be adding 120 hertz support in the future. And so I decided to wait so I could do a proper and thorough comparison between Airlink and virtual desktop. So now finally, after getting all the updates, I've been able to compare the two. And despite Airlink being free, I think Virtual Desktop is hands down the superior option with no competition. That said, there are a few specific times when you'll want to use Airlink over Virtual Desktop, but generally Virtual Desktop is the way to go. And I'm going to explain why it's worth spending a little extra money to get that better experience. If you're new to wireless VR gaming, check out this video here that explains how to set up Virtual Desktop. Pretty much everything in the first part of the video applies to Airlink as well, at least as far as how to to set up your wireless connection and router and all that. If you want me to make an updated guide for both Airlink and Virtual Desktop, let me know down in the comments. But for now, let's talk about which platform is better and why. As far as performance goes, Virtual Desktop seems to run better overall. The main way we can compare the two is in terms of latency at a specific bitrate. The bitrate is essentially the amount of data being communicated per second, and the latency is how long it takes to send that data back and forth. So a low bitrate of 30 megabits per second will have a low latency, but it also won't look very good in the headset as you're losing visual fidelity. A higher bitrate of 150 megabits per second will look better, but it will have much higher latency. So to compare the two, I set both Virtual Desktop and Airlink to a fixed bitrate of 100 megabits per second to see what kind of latency I got. I also ran both at 120 hertz, and fun fact, the higher your frame rate, the lower latency you'll generally get. I don't have a good explanation for why this is, but one guy in the Virtual Desktop Discord thought I was an idiot for not understanding why because to him, it was common sense, I guess. I thought there would be an issue running the headset at 120 hertz wirelessly, but the performance now is better than ever with the higher frequency as it looks better and I'm getting lower latency with both Virtual Desktop and Airlink than I ever have before. That said, Airlink and Virtual Desktop don't have the same amount of latency. There's one that's definitely appearing to be better, but it's hard to say for sure because Airlink has their own system for measuring latency and Virtual Desktop has their own separate system for measuring latency. They aren't necessarily the same. I talked to the developer of Virtual Desktop and he basically said that he doesn't have access to Oculus systems and how they work, so we have no idea what they're measuring when they give us latency. That said, they call it motion to photon latency, which sounds like it's the amount of time it takes from when you move your hand in real life to when you see your hand moving in VR. If that's what it's measuring, it's close enough to what Virtual Desktop is measuring that we can get an accurate comparison. But let's take this comparison with a grain of salt, because like I said, they could be using completely different systems. All of that said, while on Link, I was getting about 50 to 60 milliseconds of latency, only occasionally dropping to about mid 40 latency during loading screens. In Virtual Desktop, I was getting about 30 to 40 milliseconds of latency, often dropping even lower than 30 milliseconds. This is a huge difference between the two. I, I just have to say that, like in Airlink, I was usually about 59, 60 milliseconds of latency most of the time. Whereas with a virtual desktop, depending on the game, I was anywhere between 30 and 40, 40 sometimes, sometimes even a little bit lower. Outside of just the numbers, I could definitely notice the difference between the two. So again, while these numbers might not be perfect comparisons, the difference was very obvious to me. I felt like Virtual Desktop was much more in time with my movements than Oculus Air Link was. One example of this was when I was testing them out playing The Walking Dead Saints and Sinners. I throw a lot of things at zombies because it's a lot more effective and because it makes me feel freaking cool. But anyways, I'm used to Virtual Desktop and can throw and hit my targets like 90% of the time in Virtual Desktop. It's not a problem. But I jumped into Air Link to test things out and I started missing every single throw. I was legitimately trying because at this point I didn't realize latency would affect my throwing, but I was legitimately trying and just missing every shot. It was only after thinking about it for a bit that I realized that with the higher latency, I'm throwing when I think is the right moment, but the computer doesn't get that information for a few extra milliseconds, and so my throws end up being later than what I intended, and thus lower and not in their face. It hits the ground. And that's just because the computer, the game itself, is getting the information a little bit later than when I'm actually intending to throw it. So all of this to say, there is definitely a difference. There is definitely higher latency in Oculus Air Link overall, but are those extra milliseconds really worth paying for virtual desktop, I mean, you gotta remember, Airlink's free and virtual desktop's not. Well, let's talk about some other performance issues. Another performance factor is how each method affects your PC's performance. As far as the frames per second I was able to get with each system, Oculus Airlink was really bad compared to virtual desktop. 
For most games, it would run at about 60 frames per second with any action that was going on, only jumping higher if there were no enemies or no movement. It was really bad. Granted, I was running Oculus Mirror while recording this, but I did test it without Oculus Mirror and it was only slightly better. I was never able to run at a full 120 hertz even without Oculus Mirror. As for Virtual Desktop, as you can see here, it normally ran most games at 120 frames per second easily, only slightly dropping below occasionally. This is wildly better than anything I was getting with Airlink. Now, obviously, if I had a better setup, I could probably get Airlink to run at 120 frames per second as well, but this is a comparison video, and the fact that my setup has a much easier time with Virtual Desktop is a huge sign to anyone deciding between the two that has a less than ideal setup. Definitely, Virtual Desktop is the way to go. Now, let's talk about stability. Since Virtual Desktop has been around for a while, it also runs much more stably than Airlink for some reason. I don't get it, but it just does. Randomly, when I was playing Airlink one time, it just got super buggy and laggy, and I was only getting like 15 to 20 frames per second after playing a round of Blade and Sorcery. I don't know what changed to make that happen, but I have heard other people reporting a similar problem where after only playing for a little bit, it would suddenly become really laggy and choppy using Airlink. Another time testing Airlink for this video, Airlink just simply crashed. I wasn't even doing Doing anything that intense. It was just a level in Half-Life Alex that was very boring, nothing was happening, no enemies were appearing, and the game just randomly decided to crash. Granted, I was recording, but I should be able to record and play games at the same time. Considering Airlink is in beta right now and brand new, I'm sure most of these problems will get fixed over time. But as of right now, it's still a major problem, and one of the major reasons I'm still using Virtual Desktop is the stability. I can use Virtual Desktop literally all day while recording and streaming, and it never crashes or lags out for me. As of recording this video, I can't say the same for Airlink. So now that we know overall Virtual Desktop runs better, we need to talk about the functionality of each program. And by functionality, I mean what games work with which platform. As far as functionality goes, there are a few reasons why I might dip into Airlink for a few specific games. There are some games that just simply don't work with Virtual Desktop. For example, the official Minecraft VR mod on the Oculus Store just doesn't work with Virtual Desktop and only works with Airlink. Zombieland is another example of a game that only worked with some form of Oculus Link. So for those few Oculus games that just don't work with Virtual Desktop, I'm going to use Airlink. As far as Steam VR games go, pretty much all of them should work with Virtual Desktop, but you can always check the Virtual Desktop's compatibility list, which can be found in the Virtual Desktop Discord server. One more important factor to consider is the user interface and user experience. Now, this is a little bit more subjective than anything else, and I'll obviously be biased since I'm used to Virtual Desktop, but I'm going to say it anyways. I prefer Virtual Desktop over Airlink, and I'm going to tell you why. Number one, anytime that I want to use Airlink, I have to go on my computer before I put on my headset and enable Airlink in the PC app if it's been more than 24 hours since I last used it. This is a small detail, but it's really annoying, especially because I have the Virtual Desktop Streamer app set to automatically be open anytime I turn on my computer. This means that anytime I want to jump into VR with Virtual Desktop, I just need to put on the headset and I don't need to do anything else with my computer besides just making sure it's on, obviously. It's much easier and more convenient than Airlink. Next is the general interaction with my computer through Virtual Desktop. Sometimes, especially if I'm recording or streaming, I need to interact with the computer through the headset. And you can do this through both platforms, but Virtual Desktop seems to do it way better than Oculus. For one, the general Oculus menu UI seems outdated, clunky, and not very intuitive. There also seems to be more lag when trying to interact with the PC. The screens all get in the way of each other, the, the keyboard kept popping up inside of me, and overall it's just not user-friendly. It works, don't get me wrong, and if I just spent the time to get used to it, I'm sure I'd love it even more, but it just, in my opinion, right now isn't as good as Virtual Desktop. That said, Airlink does allow you to have multiple windows open and Virtual Desktop does not. So if you want to look at several screens at once, Airlink might be the way to go. But as far as everything else, Virtual Desktop is better. In Virtual Desktop, you can interact with your PC smoothly. Everything works. The keyboard works great. I have hotkeys I can use to switch between monitors and opening games. And Virtual Desktop, it's just a lot easier, especially when you want to open games. Opening games in Virtual Desktop, especially Steam VR games, is so much easier. In Airlink, Steam VR games don't show up unless you just recently played them, while on Virtual Desktop all of your games show up, Steam or Oculus, in the Games tab. Maybe I'm just being biased because I've been using Virtual Desktop already for a long time, but in my honest opinion, the user experience is just so much better with Virtual Desktop to open games, interact with your PC, and more. And as someone who streams and records frequently, having easy access to my PC in the middle of a game is super important. So there you have it, spend the extra money to get Virtual Desktop. I believe it is worth it right now, especially if you plan on doing a lot of PC VR. 
If you're just trying it out or have a less than ideal router setup right now, then maybe save your money and get, use that money to get a better router first. Because hands down, the quality of the router will make more of a difference than anything else. If you want to know what kind of router you should get, you should check out this video here where I compare a bunch of different routers at a bunch of different price points to see how much you really need to spend to get a decent setup. The one I used in today's video will be linked down in the description of this video as well if you just want to check that out. I also want to thank my YouTube members for supporting me. You all are amazing. But anyways, that's it for me. I'm out.